all my equipment's old and I can't afford to replace it. And I was giving a, a, a really deep lecture. Anyway, it was really good, but I lost it because my card is full and I don't know where it stopped. And my camera keeps shutting off. And, and... I recently saw the Goldfinch movie, which was kind of like watching spark notes of the book. I love the book. I've got it right here. This is one of my favorite books of all time, even though people say that the characters are sort of unlikable, which is a big deal breaker for me most of the time. I'm still a big fan of this book and the author. I wanted to talk about Donna Tartt and her books today because I love them, but also because there's kind of a rarefied quality to her work that people are talking about in a way that is... Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, finally. These technical problems are really frustrating. Donna Tart says that she basically paints murals with a minuscule little paintbrush, and that's how she goes about her work. And there could be no more accurate description. I will read you some quotes so that you get an idea of the kind of writing that I'm talking about. Even in some smoky post-catastrophe Manhattan, you could imagine him swaying genially at the door and the rags of his former uniform, the barbers up in the apartment burning old National Geographics for warmth and living off of gin and tinned... Wow. How easy it would have been to bring some of her things, like the silver box that had been her mother's, or the painting of a chestnut mare that looked like a stubs, or even her childhood copy of Black Beauty, it wasn't as if he couldn't have used a few good pictures or some of the furniture she'd inherited from her parents. He had gotten rid of her things because he hated her. So there are details within details within details in her work and every detail informs another detail until you get a totally real and complete picture of the world that she is in to the point that you absorb it and you want to be be a part of this. You, you want to, you know, walk through three feet of snow in Vermont or pace the streets of New York. Uh, like, you want to do those things because of the way that she writes. Now, everybody loves her writing style. I'm not going to argue with that. I love it. I'm a huge fan, and I have nothing productive to say as a reviewer of these books other than to just gush about them. My thoughts, though, are that, you know, she's writing this rarefied quality of work. Takes her 10 years to do. And this is just the kind of, you know, I want to say rarefied again. This is the kind of mastery and expertise that we all crave and we all want to either perform or have in our work, but it's disappearing from the world. And the reason why it's disappearing is not because people don't value it. It's disappearing because the market is consistently rewarding and even going against itself to reward quantity, shallowness, clicks, Whatever else is destroying the journalism industry, for example. You know, journalists used to be investigators, highly educated, hardworking people who, which they are, but they, you know, you could spend months on a story and try to get the story out. It could make your career as a journalist. You would be known as that journalist, but we don't know journalists anymore. We just know what feed we're on and what we're scrolling. And while I understand that it's, possible to monetize attention and therefore you want to get attention. I have to say, I think a lot of industries and a lot of leaders have been shooting themselves in the foot because in my eyes, the goldfinch proves that a high level of quality and artistry in any field will always have a place in the market and it will always sell to the right buyer given that buyers and consumers have enough money, which in America right now, arguably, we don't. So maybe the problem is a large economic issue, but if you don't pay writers to work well, if you don't pay journalists to do deep investigative journalism, if you pay them to post to Twitter 20 times a day, then yes, their skill is gonna erode. They're not going to be able to achieve the same level of deep work that they really want to really want to do. This is personal to me. I mean, this frustrates me beyond belief. I believe in quantity. I do believe that you know, by doing something a lot, you can generate a lot. But I'm a novelist, and to be clear, I spent a decade of my life working on what I consider to be my best novel, and nobody paid me to do that, and nobody, no publisher anyway, wants to buy it right now. It's still objectively my best work. I think it objectively is. 
I'll probably work on it some more to be perfectly honest with you because those 10 years were also spent surviving a lot of other things and I couldn't give it the focus that I really wanted it to. So this isn't just to say that, oh, woe is me, if I had as much time as the Donna Tarts of the world, I too would be a bestseller. But it is really frustrating that increasingly we're finding that people have to have an enormous amount of privilege and education to be able to dedicate the time needed to achieve mastery, especially in the States. Of course, this was true with, you know, throughout history, this has always been true, but we were getting closer and closer to creating a world where somebody could specialize in something that they cared about or, or, or that they grew to care about and could be paid well to do that thing in, in any field. And what astonishes me now, and I, the reason why I think there is a rise of self-employment, aside from the fact that there's not a lot of full-time living wage jobs in the States right now, is the fact that we live in a kind of world and economy where if you want to do things your way and do it all the time, you can't really work for somebody else. But I would say that I and a lot of other people would be very happy to work for an employer if it meant that they were learning a particular skill and if it were about the quality and not the quantity. But it seems that clicks and attention getting and social media has infiltrated every industry, not to mention automation. I mean, journalists now, you know, as a writer growing up, I obviously I'm into fiction, but I always thought, well, I could learn my craft as a journalist. Because if you look at all the great writers throughout time, they did things like they worked with, with booksellers and printers. They worked at publishing companies. And as journalists, they worked jobs that no longer exist. So for writers like me, we're feeling really lost because unless you go into teach and even the academic, we know that industry and that world is crumbling in its own way. But there seems to be no career path that can actually support an education, if that makes sense, a, a, a path to learn something new. I, I think architecture might be the only industry right now where you can be specialized in, in a craft and work for an employer and be expected to do that craft. Like, I mean, if you want to, it, it's just... It just seems that the workplace is not as straightforward as it once was. And I don't know because I haven't been around long enough to know, but it really seems that that's what's happening. And that's causing a lot of existential crisis among like working people right now, because it seems that all jobs are about managing computers doing the jobs or about getting as much attention as possible, learning new things quickly, but not learning them well. And that can spell disaster for things like the goldfinch. So having having read a lot of Donna Tartt's work this year really got me inspired to just return to what I consider to be my roots, which is that, you know, you learn something and you become really good at it. And if it takes time, it takes time. Even though I've never worked as a journalist and I've never worked um, for an employer as a writer outside of contract work, I've never been you know, an, strictly an employee as a writer. Um, the most frustrating things that I found in my varied work history is the pressure to just do as much as possible without any real concern about the level of quality. Even, I, I mean, I recently had a job interview for um, content writing, and even that was very much about quotas. I mean, it, it was quotas. It was how much, how many websites can you write per day? And if you write this many per day, then you can then write this much the next day. And it's just so numbers driven, but human beings are not numbers. We're not numbers. We're not numbers driven. So what I would do is I just want to honestly encourage you to read books and think about the kinds of things that take people a lot of time. Because if you're reading a novel that took 10 years, what you are reading is the best and most developed thoughts of a human being over the course of 10 years. And that's a far better use of your time than scrolling on a Facebook feed. And again, it's it's not to disparage, you know, diversity of education 
or quantity. One of the things that I've had to learn coming back to YouTube and coming to social media is how important it can be to just be exposed to lots of different ideas and to and to even repeat yourself and maybe make content every single day if that's what's calling you. Um, I think that's actually a whole like side of the equation that is being uncovered and that's awesome. But the expectation that we need to all compete in this like numbers driven world that nobody is really a fully there with and nobody is really a part of just frustrates the heck out of me. I mean, and it affects all of us. Think about even the healthcare industry. I mean, you know, obviously there's more factors at work there than I understand, but doctors used to have their own office. They used to know their patients really well, and now it's just all about doing things as quickly as you can. But quality of care matters so much in in every possible way. And if you look at every Western dystopia that has been posited over the last 40 years, they all warn us about this, about the overemphasis of quantity, speed, and numbers over humanity, over quality, over contemplation. So put your money where your dreams are, take time to contemplate, look at things that have taken a long time to do, and you know, if you're someone who um, is a little philanthropic or you're able to put money or time or resources into things, like, please consider putting your energy and money into things that support that kind of work. So, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how much you missed. I'll find out in post whether you heard my lecture or not. The camera and my recorder and I need new equipment that is expensive. So, uh, basically, thank you for watching. And go read Donna Tart if you haven't already. And, uh, yeah, it's all connected, my friends. Peace. I would really love to continue this discussion in the comments, so feel free to leave one below. And don't forget to smoosh the subscribe button. And if you like this video, please consider sharing it with your friends. Thanks for watching. It's all connected, my friends.